Hey, welcome back everyone and welcome back to a new episode of Corvette Ed's Garage. Yeah, I know it's been a little bit, but you know, I needed a break from YouTube and I needed a break from Corvette. It's driving me nuts there, you know, because there's still a problem that I'm, I'm dealing with the Corvette and uh, the brake's going to give me a fresh mind and I get back into that problem and fix it. Now in this episode, we're going to pull that plastic OEM piece of shit power steering reservoir out of the car because it is leaking and we're going to replace it with an aluminum Canton Racing Power Steering Reservoir. Now, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to use the uh, original mounting bracket that was for the OEM uh, Power Steering Reservoir. So, I'm going to have to conjure up some uh, brackets uh, and then figure out how to install it, where to put it in a car that has no space whatsoever. So, with that being said, let's go ahead and just jump right into it and enjoy the video. There's a lot of material we got to cover. Now we're down to our last link here. Um, couldn't figure out what exactly was going on with the uh, power steering reservoir. I pulled it off, it's not leaking. Uh, I mean, it's, I pulled it off, it's not cracked. However, it's leaking. So, um, don't know what that's all about. There's probably a hairline fracture somewhere around there, probably around the nipple where the hose connects to. Uh, so, I decided to scrap that one all together. I can't find new. OEM Moss and I ended up going with a <clears throat> Canton Racing uh, Power Steering Reservoir. That's this puppy right here. So what I'm going to attempt to do here, I'm going to have to pull that off. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have to, I, I got these out brackets. I have a cross uh, bar that goes from the passenger side of the frame all the way to the driver's side of the frame where the uh, original Power Steering uh, Reservoir sound. Um, I'm gonna, I got these from eBay, they're l back. it's about a um, quarter inch thick, so they should be strong enough for this here. Uh, I'm going to uh, drill some holes uh, into the uh, crossbar and another hole going right like here. The second one on the other side and what I'm going to attempt to do is uh, connect the power steering reservoir with clamp. Uh, onto these uh, brackets and uh, then that should take care of my last leak. So let's get to it. So first things first, we have to um, drain the uh, power steering reservoir. So we're gonna have to suck that fluid out. Now, this is fresh fluid that I just put in there. So uh, I'm gonna be somewhat conservative and save it because it's uh, red line uh, power steering reservoir fluid and that shit is not a cheap so I, I'm going to uh, save as much as I can and then put it back in there. Okay now that we have the power steering reservoir uh, drained we'll go ahead and remove the two hoses that are connected to the unit. We have one up on t uh, in the center there and we have another one that's uh, down below, which is the return line. Uh, that one I'm going to leave intact to try to stop as much of the leakage as I can, because I hate leaks. Anyway, we'll disconnect this clamp. Now, that clamp is part of the OEM brackets. It's one unit. Why? I don't know why they made them that way. It's 1985. Go figure. Anyway, uh, once that's loosened, we'll go ahead and yank that puppy out and minimize the leakage and eh, we got a little leak there that's okay <laughs> not as bad as i thought so anyway we'll go ahead and uh, remove the uh, bracket uh, and uh, there you go now there he is this is all the space i have for the new unit go figure well it is what it is so let's just go ahead and move on Now a little bit about the uh, brackets that I ended up using uh, for this project. Now, originally I was going to go down to uh, Home Depot and pick up some aluminum angle. But you know, I started thinking about it because I, it's always, sometimes it's just a hit and miss over at Home Depot. So I started going online and there and behold, there they were exactly what I needed. A little bit longer than what I wanted, but that was okay. I was going to go ahead and uh, uh, trim it down to the size I needed it. Uh, now, 
I ended up buying two sets of these because I just wanted to make sure that I had enough for mistakes. And let me tell you, man, there, there was mistakes made. Uh, hole, drilling the holes uh, and cutting them. Uh, I don't know. I was, I was probably having an off day. You know, I think I got one left, to be honest. But all good, though, man. Uh, these ended up working as, as, as better than I thought it was going to. So um, uh, we just went with that route. And I just love the world online because, like I said, Home Depot sometimes a hit and miss. And you can just get online, eBay, Amazon. It's just great to have these options. But uh, let's move on. So the next order of business is to remove the alternator. Now the alternator is tied into the supercharger bracket, so I need to be careful not to scratch that up. So I need the room though, so I can get an idea of how that uh, power steering reservoir is gonna go in there, because this is all from scratch. All right, moving on to the brackets. Now uh, I need to drill a couple of holes there, and using the power steering reservoir and the clamp that's on it, uh, uh, we're going to do the measure measure the exact placement of the hole. Now, uh, we'll move on to the punch in our first hole, and, oh, dude, come on, and get it together, brother. There you go. Anyway, so that's our first punch on the uh, bracket. Uh, now we'll just go ahead and get it into the clamp and uh, proceed to drilling. Now, I'm going to have to cut some of the length off as well. As you can see, there is a one hole I already made. Uh, and I realized that it was just too long. So that's right. Once you got the first hole, we'll go ahead and flip it over and drill our second hole. And it looks a little off because I ended up ruining this piece anyway, but you get the idea. And once the uh, uh, hole is drilled for the bottom one, uh, we can use that uh, piece as a template so we can go ahead and make the second uh, uh, bracket. Uh, and once that's taken care of, we'll just go ahead and tighten everything down. Uh, as you can see, one's longer than the other, but I did go ahead and cut that piece uh, exactly how I needed it, but uh, for some reason I lost the video. But anyway, that's exactly how I want it, and we'll use that flat piece of surface as a crossbar. That's exactly how it's going to go. Well done. All right, uh, the power steering reservoir. I picked up a Canton Racing power steering reservoir. Now, as you can see, it uh, cost me $159, and a lot of you might say, well, that's kind of expensive, but uh, it, it, it's just some things to consider with this tank here. It is made out of aluminum. Uh, it did come with the bracket and the clamp, uh, and it also has a baffle inside to keep the fluid from sloshing around when you go around the corner. You know, now, when I was autocrossing, that would have been uh, uh, preferable because uh, I was doing a lot of cornering uh, when I was uh, at those events. But now versus the OEM power steering reservoir, well, it was cracked on the bottom, the nipple, because it's made out of plastic. So that piece of shit got tossed out. Now I did try to look for a, uh, a another one. There's no new ones being made, so that's out of the question. And then uh, the, the ones that were available were used. And you know what? Uh, the cheapest one I found was about like $70. And you know what? And they were going over $100. I think the, well, I found one that was for about $130. You know, uh, but you're still talking about used, no matter how you look at it. So why do I want to end up going through the same problem later on down the road? So at $159, I found this to be uh, more acceptable than uh, going the other way. Let's move on. So now I'm just going to go ahead and mock things up here to kind of get an idea if, uh, I mean, how this is going to be uh, placed in there. So once I've figured that part out, I'm going to go ahead and uh, uh, put the alternator back on temporarily. Uh, it's going to be loosely fit so I can get a better idea of uh, how and where that's going to be permanently placed. So now it's just a matter of uh, figuring out uh, the exact spot it needs to be. As you can see, that hole is just uh, right uh, above that uh, um, reservoir cap. But 
you know what, there's still enough room in there for me to pull the cap off and have no issues in draining it. But once we've gotten that part we're just uh, done, we're just going to go ahead and uh, uh, start mounting this thing permanently. I went ahead and moved the uh, alternator so um, we uh, have uh, plenty of room in there to uh, play with it. As you can see, I'm just uh, bolting things down here, man. This is permanent now. And again, that cap is pretty, uh, uh, it's, it's buried underneath that uh, hose, but there is enough room to pull that cap. Oh. Uh, with that being said, uh, I think it's time to go ahead and move on to the next step. So now that we have everything uh, permanently installed somewhat, we went ahead and removed the power steering reservoir so we can start dealing with the uh, hoses. Well, now the, the bottom hose, the return line, um, that's a, uh, a form hose. So what I ended up doing is just added a splitter to it and added additional hose to that. Uh, the center hose uh, that goes to the reservoir, that was trimmed down uh, just somewhat. It was, it was a little bit too long. Now we're going to go ahead and uh, attach the power steering unit to the brackets. And as you can see, it's just a simple bracket, uh, nothing fantastic, but uh, the brackets were trimmed down because they stuck out above that uh, bolt a little bit too far, so I trimmed those down. So we'll go ahead and uh, tighten this puppy up and pretty much call it a wrap. Uh, we just have to uh, connect the hoses to uh, the power steering unit. Uh, at this point, we just go ahead and tighten the clamp uh, that holds the power steering reservoir. Now, once uh, we've got everything tightened now, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, finish up the uh, tightening on the uh, bracket there. And one last uh, check. I always uh, go back over it uh, and check it with uh, a, a regular hand tool. That's pretty secure on there. Uh, I think the job came out uh, pretty good for mm, something that just came out of my head, you know. Uh, now that we've gotten to this point, we'll go ahead and start putting fluid back into the power steering reservoir. Uh, as I mentioned before, I, I saved some of that power steering fluid because it was brand new uh, when I uh, uh, put it in there originally, so I didn't want to I would have had to buy another bottle. I didn't want to have to do all that. So, now that uh, we've got the uh, old, old new fluid back in, we'll go ahead and uh, top this puppy back off. And as you can see, the fluid coming out of the bottle was just as clean as the fluid that was uh, going in there from the uh, bucket. One thing I don't like about uh, this is it doesn't have a dipstick like the OEM uh, had which was uh, a great asset, and trust me man, rather than try to figure out how much fluid to put in there. This power steering reservoir is similar to the configuration of my OEM power steering reservoir, so it was easy to guesstimate uh, how much uh, fluid to put in there. Now we'll just go ahead and seal this puppy up. We're ready. And there we have it guys. Uh, it's uh, installed permanently, hoses are hooked up, alternators hooked up, and it's been filled up with fluid. All you have to do is just have a plan, an idea, and then just go ahead and execute it. Simple. And that, my friends, is how you create brackets for an aftermarket power strain reservoir. It wasn't really that hard. Um, you know, anybody can do it. It's just keeping it simple. When you start complicating things, that's when it starts getting a little bit sticky. So, uh, as old as I am nowadays, I just want to keep everything simple. And that's about the simplest way to uh, do it uh, when it comes to fabricating something like this to make it work. Uh, I did have problems with the hoses. Uh, it's so tight underneath there and that's the one we didn't see. Let's take a look at the uh, bottom hose there, the return line. As you can see, uh, there's really not that much room in there. Uh, I mean, I, I got no room. Uh, I was still able to make it uh, work. Uh, the original fitting was a straight fitting, but uh, as you can see here, I had to get a 90 degree fitting. I think it's 90 degree or 45, not 90 degree, uh, to make this work. Well, there you go there. Uh, it was all tight, regardless. I mean, you know, it, it's Corvette, you know. Uh, 
it, it is what it is. Uh, nothing you can do about it. But work around it. Anyway, well, we hope you guys all uh, learned something. Uh, and hopefully you see how simple the process this really was. Uh, it took a little bit to get on there, but uh, with, uh, uh, with the right tools and even with the hand, it wouldn't with hand tools. You can make this happen for your own self. So anyway, don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, all the above. And we'll catch you on another episode of Corvette Ed's Garage.